Tonight on Why News. The PNP CIDG files kidnapping and serious illegal detention charges against former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV and three others. Vice President Lenny Robredo files for counter affidavit for the sedition case filed against her at the Department of Justice. Chinese President Xi Jinping refuses to recognize the Hague Arbitral Tribunal ruling which favors the Philippines in the maritime dispute in the South China Sea. An oil spill causes heavy traffic in EDSA. And the Philippine Embassy in Brazil celebrates the 100th year of Philippine cinema through film showing. Good evening. Former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV and three others are facing kidnapping with serious illegal detention charges. April Senadoza explains why. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group has filed a kidnapping and serious illegal detention case against former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV, Attorney Jude Sabio, a certain nun identified as Sister Leng, and priest Albert Alejo. Sabio is the lawyer who filed a communication against President Rodrigo Duterte before the International Criminal Court over the killings that happened amid the government's drug war. The case filed refers to the complaint of 43-year-old Davao-based businesswoman, Guillermina Lalik Barido, who was detained for two weeks in a convent in Quezon City in 2016. In 2017, Barido surfaced and claimed Trillanes tried to bribe her to destroy the president's reputation. The PNP CIDG says the respondents clearly placed the complainant under detention for 14 days, forcing her to do something against her will. But Trillanes denied the allegation calling it President Duterte's harassment and persecution on his critics. He also denied meeting Barido and questioned her statement that she was detained in the convent. Trillana said Barido asked for money in exchange for a statement, but she was not accepted to testify against Duterte. Meanwhile, in a statement, Sabio said Barido told him she personally saw the activities of the president, including his son Paulo, concerning illegal drugs in Davao. Sabio said he believed Barido was stating the truth and even checked Barido's statements for two months. The lawyer said Barido is trying to copy Bicoy's style, knowing he was not included in the sedition case filed against Vice President Lenny Robredo and other opposition officials. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Vice President Lenny Robredo denied allegations she met Peter Jomel Advincola, who accused the former of being behind the online videos linking the Duterte family to narcotics trade. In her counter affidavit in relation to inciting to sedition complaint filed against her by the Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detention Group, Detection Group, or PNPCIDG, Robredo maintained she did not take part in an alleged destabilization plot against the Duterte administration through a meeting supposedly held at the Ateneo de Manila University on March 4, 2019. Robredo filed her counter affidavit at the Department of Justice, personally appearing to sign it under oath before Justice Senior Assistant State Prosecutor Olivia Torrevillas. She was accompanied by her lawyer, Marlon Manuel. Along with her counter affidavit, Robredo also proved, provided photos, news reports, and other documentation to prove that she was in Bulacan on March 4 for official engagement. Robredo said the evidence she submitted to the DOJ will prove that Advincula's allegations were impossible and an outright lie. <music> President Rodrigo Duterte and Chinese President Xi Jinping formally met last night at the Diao Yutai State Guest House in Beijing for a bilateral meeting. President Duterte raised the arbitral ruling, but China still doesn't recognize, recognize it. Despite this, the president's visit in China went well. Rosalie Kos explains why. 
Kan Yang, the president did not fail in the goal of his fifth visit to China and eighth meeting with the Chinese president. Describing in his own words, the president said, it went very well. Oh, and if it went very well, they, how can it be a failure? President Duterte also discussed with President Xi the crafting of a code of conduct in the South China Sea. This is to resolve conflicts in the disputed territories. The Chinese chief executive agreed there's a need to have it within the remaining term of the Philippine president. Despite the controversial issues concerning the maritime dispute, President Duterte is still decisive to further strengthen cooperation with China. Today, let us reaffirm the value of our relationship, both personal and official, as well as the trust, the respect, and forces of mutual benefit that we have been building over the last three years. To be sure, there have been challenges, yet we are living up to our commitment to define our ties as a comprehensive strategic cooperation. President Xi expressed willingness to cooperate for both countries' people to benefit and maintain regional peace and stability. Malacanya hopes both countries will observe self-restraint and certain acts such as Chinese warships passing through our territorial waters without seeking for permission and Filipino fishermen harassment will be avoided. The negotiations and dialogue between China and the Philippines on the maritime dispute will continue. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Beijing, China. President Rodrigo Duterte met Hong Kong action star Jackie Chan Thursday night during his visit to Beijing, China. Photos provided by former presidential aide and now Senator Christopher Bongo showed Chan giving President Duterte two panda bear stuffed toys and the star's 2015 memoir, Never Grow Up. According to Go, the Hollywood star also gifted the president with a jacket and a book. Chan even posed with Duterte's signature first fist bump in one photo. Oil spilled from a tanker in Edsa this morning that caused heavy traffic during the morning rush hours in St. Arboleda. Do tell us why. Heavy traffic from Edsa Bansalangin to Quezon Avenue in Quezon City greeted morning travelers today. This after a tanker hit a pillar of a footbridge while trying to maneuver at a U-turn slot. The hit made a breach on the hull of the tanker, causing for the oil to spill. Then, uh, nagkandak po kami ng uh, flushing po, ginamit namin ang aming fire truck. After flushing the oil with water, the responders laid out sawdust to absorb the remaining oil on the ground and to prevent slipping and further accidents. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Philippine Embassy in Brazil celebrates the 100th year of Philippine cinema. This is the first celebration of its kind in the cultural relations between the two countries. Jun Soreao details why. Through continuous efforts and meetings between Philippine Ambassador to Brazil Marichu Mauro and Federal District of Brazil Culture Secretary Adnao Candido, a special screening of Filipino motion picture, Ano Ang Kulay ng Nakalimutang Pangarap on August 28, was a success. It is a film under seasoned Filipino director Jose Javier Reyes, starring Miss Rustica Carpio, Jackie Lu Blanco, Ryan Agoncillo, Babby Andrews, and a lot more. I take this opportunity to thank the Distrito Federal Secretary of Cultura, uh, ni uh, Senor uh, Adao Candido, uh, and other officials of the uh, Cultural Secretariat. They are just so nice to, to lend us this venue. Uh, Cine Brasilia to, for, to enable us to show our, our film. The film showing ahead of the celebration of the centennial of the Philippine cinema this September aims to introduce the Philippine culture to the Brazilians. The locals say they enjoyed the movie as well as learned from it. I think a reality that already happened. It's sad but it's really nice. I think it was the most interesting part to me to be able to know a little more of the Filipino way of living. 
I knew already a little, just a little of the Philippine culture, but I think he brought it in a beautiful way. Ambassador Mauro vows more activities await the Brazilians. Marami kaming naka in store na projects. Uh, ang susunod namin ay uh, to promote the tourism uh, cooperation uh, between Brazil and the Philippines. At marami din kaming mga cultural projects na darating. Next year, a travel exhibit called Ang Hibla ng Lahing Pilipino will be held to promote Philippine tourism in Brazil. Jun Suryao, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar, and here are the headlines. Government employees warned on the use of gadgets during office hours. Solon see the need for a designated survivor to prevent lawlessness and disorder in the country. Lawmakers believe raising the rape statutory age in the country may address the country's problem on teen prostitution. The Philippines has recorded the highest dengue fatality rate in Southeast Asia. And La Verdad Christian College ranks third among top performing schools in the August 2019 Social Worker Board exam. Good evening. Caught in the act of using their smartphones while at work. This is shown on photos and videos from the Civil Service Commission. Such government employees are warned they may face sanctions. Shoma Nano tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte has warned government agencies that is slow in providing services to Filipinos. I reiterate my government, uh, my directive to the government and in instrumentalities, including the LGUs and the government corporations. Simplify, simplify, just like the others. You can do it electronically. You do not have to go to the office. I've been asking that from you since three years ago. But it seems some are not threatened by this warning. The public have been complaining of slow transactions with various government offices. The Civil Service Commission caught some government employees idle and doing non-work-related activities during surprise visits nationwide. On this video, two alleged Nino Aquino International Airport employees are seen browsing their cell phones. Several employees from the local government of Coronadel City were also caught busy selling jewelry during office hours, while some were allegedly seen playing with their cell phones. Others are not wearing their government ID, while this information desk is left unmanned. This information desk of the Commission on Higher Education in Region 12 violated the no noon time break policy. According to Commissioner Irene Lizada, government employees proven of neglect in their duties might be penalized with suspension or termination. We have coordinated with the regional director. He will be talking and having meetings with the different heads of agency as well as the mayor of Coronadal next week. Para sila ho ang magdisiplina doon sa kanilang mga respective mga employees. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Kalaokan City. The Department of Justice has put on hold the deportation of four convicted Chinese drug lords who had been released under Republic Act 10592 or the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara says the Bureau of Immigration has been directed to stop the implementation of the deportation order pending the review of the GCTA guidelines. The convicted Chinese drug lords were put under BI custody following their release from the new Belibid prison. A DOJ task force was created to review the guidelines in the recommendation of jail term reduction amid public outrage on the supposed release of murder and rape convict Antonio Sanchez. Meanwhile, Malacanang says that inmates convicted for heinous crimes but were granted early freedom under the GCTA must be sent back to jail. According to presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo, the GCTA does not apply to them. Obviously, dapat makabalik sila sa sepuluhan. The Bureau of Corrections revealed Thursday that almost 2,000 prisoners convicted of heinous crimes 
have already been released because of the GCTA since 2013 when Republic Act 10592 was signed into law. Aside from Senator Panfilo Lacson, another lawmaker believes there is really a need for a designated survivor in the country. Grace Kassin details why. So, halimbawa, merong extremist o merong uh, terrorist na bombahin yung batasan at naubos lahat, wala tayong susunod na successor. This is the fear of Senator Panfilo Lacson every time the President, Vice President, Senators, Congressmen, and Cabinet members are in one event like the State of the Nation Address. Under the Constitution, the line of succession to Presidency is from Vice President down to House Speaker. After the Speaker of the House, we will uh, continue the line of succession uh, by naming the most senior member of the Senate in terms of number of years. And then after that, kung nawala pa rin, naubos pa rin lahat ng senador, yung most senior member of the House of Representatives. Kung maubos pa rin yung lahat ng members of House of, of Representatives, the President will now designate a, a designated survivor from among the members of the Cabinet. In the version of Quezon City Representative Precious Hipolito Castello, the President will choose a designated survivor among his cabinet members. The lady lawmaker said the designated survivor is needed to prevent lawlessness and disorder in the absence of a leader. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue. Five bills have been filed in Senate that seek to amend the statutory rape age in the country. According to some lawmakers, it's high time to amend the anti-rape law of 1997 to strengthen protection of minors against abuses. Nel Maribohok details why. Under the anti-rape law of 1997, an individual can be charged with statutory rape for having sexual contact with minors aged 12 years old below with or without her consent. Under the existing law, 12 years and below have no power to give sexual consent. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri proposes to raise the age of consent from 12 years old to 15 years old, while Senator Sherwin Gachalian wants to raise it to 18 years old. Gachalian explains that age of majority in the Philippines starts at the age of 18, at which a Filipino can give consent to a contract and can vote. He says this can be considered as the proper age of giving sexual consent. For him, this move can address teen prostitution. In the United States, the legal age of consent is between 16 to 18 years old. 16 years old in Canada and Australia. The average age of consent in some Asian countries is 16 years old. The Philippines can be considered as one of the countries with the lowest age of consent. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Agriculture, or DA, encourages local government units to help farmers by buying their produce. This is to lessen the effect of the decreasing Pale farm gate price amid the implementation of the rice tariffication law. Ray Pelayo details why. The government of Nueva Ecija will buy the palay harvest of farmers in the province for up to 15 pesos per kilogram. Since the implementation of the rice tariffication law, the farm gate price of palay has continued to decrease to as low as 8 pesos per kilogram. DA Secretary William Dar says Nueva Ecija has allotted a 200 million peso fund for palay procurement. The procured palay will eventually be sold to the public. This is also the practice in Isabela. Yung bigas ay, ay uh, binibili ito ng sister cities para naman sa mga empleyado nila. The DA will help facilitate the loan assistance with the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines wherein the IRA will be used as collateral. The DA also encourages the top 30 rice producing provinces to do the same. Secretary Dar has also mandated the National Food Authority or NFA to fast track the process of selling rice to the public. The NFA clarifies that the more than 4 million sacks of rice in their warehouses are in good condition. Ray Pelayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. The issue on hot meat is controversial in the country nowadays because of the cases of sudden death of swines in some parts of the country. It is important to be sure that the pork bought in the market is safe to eat. 
Aiko Miguel tells us why. The National Meat Inspection Service advises that when buying pork, a consumer should check if the meat shop has a meat inspection certificate displayed. Make sure you are not buying hot meat. Analiza Apolinario, a meat vendor in Balintawak Public Market for some 30 years now, says that this coloration is an indication of hot meat. Ang bocha kasi hindi magandang kulay. Tsaka nayelo na yun kung isa ano. Nangingitim kung basta kaya nagigirin. While Evelyn Caparas, a cook, says it is better to buy from a market stall than having meat delivered. Talaga kami, ano, bumibili talaga sa mismo pesto eh. Para matiyak. Oo, matiyak. Kasi mahirap yung deliver. Kung ano na lang ibaksak, isa pangit. DOST Secretary for Tonato de la Peña says it is better to buy from a meat shop or stall you patronize. Ginagawa ko, kung sino yung talagang suki ko, eh doon ako bumibili. Kasi alam <laughs> Alam ko namang ano, uh, hindi niya ako lalasunin. Ang, ano? uh, isang bahagi ng uh, uh, education for our people na kailangan nating uh, ma maabot. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Barangay Chairman will be held liable if obstructions will still be found in the streets of Manila City despite the city government's efforts to clear streets. Authorities continue their appeal to the public for cooperation in maintaining the city clean. Harleen Delgado explains why. Uh, yung nakiklear natin ng area, kasama natin ng Barangay Bureau, tinaturn over nila doon sa concerned Barangay German, yung cleared area. So may pinipiraman silang turnover na katunayan na pag bumalik yung mga obstructions, chairman na po ang mananagot administratively. The city government of Manila continues to race against time in clearing their streets less than a month before the DILG 60-day deadline expires. According to Manila City Engineer Armand Andres, all Manila Barangay chairmen have signed a document stating they will be held liable if obstructions such as illegal vendors and illegally parked vehicles will persist within their respective areas. He says it was DILG Undersecretary Martin Dino himself who asked the barangay officials to sign the document. Barangay Chairman Robert Bunda sees no problem with it. Sinayang po para malinis po yung daan ng propa mabrek sa taumbayan yung daan ng karsada po. Meanwhile, a man was caught dumping food waste in Recto Avenue, Binondo, Manila this morning. He said he was just following his employer's order, the owner of the vehicle he's driving. Manila Police District Special Mayor's Response Team say the suspect was allegedly paying 1,000 pesos to an alias Alfred, supposedly a former Manila City Hall employee. Uh, supplier sila sa mga supermarket daw dun sa ano, ng mga uh, vegetable. Two to thrice a week, nagtatapon sila dito sa along recto. The suspects will face charges for violating Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. Huwag niyo pong gawing basurahan ang lungsod ng Maynila. Respetuhin niyo naman po ang mga manilenyo. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. With all his activities, it is now easier for the netizens to follow the Yorme of Manila through social media. Thanks to his team, it feels as if you're with him as he does his rounds in the country's capital. Let's get to know who really is behind the live videos and news updates of Mayor Isko Moreno Tumacoso. Ako po si Julius N. Leonen, ang inyong lingkod na hepe ng Manila Public Information Office. Meet Julius. One of his duties is to follow Mayor Isko wherever he goes officially. Si Julius, wala pa sweldo. May sweldo na kayo? Wala pa? Ah. <laughs> nga nga. Uh. Leonin used to be a reporter before he joined Mayor Moreno's team as the public relations consultant during his campaign for the mayoral race. At the age of 22, he now leads the roster of the Manila Public Information Office staff composed of mainly millennials. Bakit nga gusto ng ano, young blood? Nainiwala siya na mas open sila sa makabagong ideya. Nainiwala si Mayor Isko na uh, open sa innovation ang mga kabataan. They embrace technology. 
According to him, their work is not easy, but they continue what they are doing, empowered by the trust in their leader and for the Manileños. Nakapagod. May mga araw na lagi kang overtime. May mga araw na kulang ka sa tulog. Pero lahat yun tanggap na namin, even before the campaign pa. Tanggap namin na yun ang magiging trabaho dahil napakaraming problema talaga ng Maynila. Leonin adds that he, together with his team, will never stop disseminating information and sharing stories of inspiration to Manileños. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Wishers got a dose of excitement as they watched the rising OPM artists perform at the Wish FM's 365 anniversary concert. Mirasola Bugadil will tell us why. We all have experienced to have loved and lost. But at the end of the day, we should learn how to rise again from the heartbreak. These are some of the top trending songs hitting the airwaves nowadays. And at the 365 anniversary concert of Wish 1075, Wishers went gaga over these two good songs. Pagkatapos mo kay pagtagagagoan, pagkatapos mo palaya, pagkatapos ng tagpuan, may kakantahan na tayo ng ikaw at ako. Oh, nananakit po talaga ka nang hindi ko sinasadya. Um, but it's really just an outlet of everything I feel. Kasi may mga, may mga memories na natitrigger, ganun. May mga wounds na kala mo healed na pero hindi pa pala. Na kailangan mong harapin yung sakit, ganun. This genre is easily embraced by the millennials as well as the young at heart because they can relate to the lyrics and messages of the songs. Maniniwala kami na maraming nakakarelate sa, sa very popular term na ngayon na hugot. Dahil ang, hu ang, ang hugot kasi para sa amin talaga, yun yung ano eh, nasa loob mo na hindi mo ka, hindi, hindi ganun kadaling masasabi mo sa ibang tao. Pero pag nasulat siya sa song, tas may realize mo na wait lang, yun yun. Responsibility din namin na yung mga sinasabi namin through our songs sa mga tao ay ano, yung magdadala sa kanila sa mas okay na kalagayan. It's really just about connecting to people. But aside from the painful experiences, these songs also impart a message of hope. Pasensya ka na But every time, sa lahat ng songs namin, may be lyrics or sa melody or sa, sa mismong sa instruments, we always try to point them back to hope. Eh. Na hindi nga, kagaya ng sabi ni Miguel, hindi dapat magtapos sa nasaktan ka lang. Dapat marunong ka rin mag-move on. Sa, sa katotohanan naman, ang average life cycle ng isang tao, di ba, goes through a lot of failed relationships before finding the right one. And as the saying goes, behind every favorite song, there is an untold story. Mirasol Abugadi, UNTV, News and Rescue. And to complete the most significant news for this day, why news continues, here are the top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte assures Chinese businessmen of corruption-free Philippines. Meanwhile, President Duterte will watch the 2019 FIBA Basketball World Cup opening with Chinese President Xi Jinping. From Beijing, China, Rosalie Kos will tell us why live. Yes, good evening, Rose. Yes, good evening, William. President Rodrigo Duterte met with some Chinese businessmen through a forum organized by the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry and uh, during the sidelines of his five-day official visit here in China. 
He assured the Chinese businessman that the Philippine government is committed to maintaining an environment that will allow business to thrive. He ensures everyone that during his term, he will not allow corruption. He also encourages the business sector to report to him personally the government employees or officials who delay business processing permits. Let's listen to the president. I will not allow corruption. I will not allow wrongdoing. I will not allow anything that will destroy or disturb your business. You have, I said, the privilege of asking your lawyers or your agents to call me and I will give you the audience. Meanwhile, President Duterte also reveals he asked the help of the Chinese government in cracking down the Chinese syndicates involved in committing crimes against Chinese nationals in the, Philippine, in the Philippines, especially those who are engaged in online gambling. Let's listen again to the President. Chinese nationals kidnapped by Chinese nationals. So, since uh, there are laws to be followed, uh, we will uh, I've asked your government to help us on this. The official visit of the president does not end here because tonight President Duterte, president Duterte is watching the 2019 FIBA Basketball World Cup opening ceremony together with Chinese President Xi Jinping at the National Aquatic Center here in Beijing. After that, he will be traveling to Guangzhou, Guangdong Province to support the Gilas Pilipinas against the Italy team. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Rosalie Cause, reporting live from Beijing, China. Meanwhile, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III says the Philippines has recorded the highest dengue fatality rate in Southeast Asia. My Bermudez will tell us why. From August 4 to August 10, 2019, more than 12,000 cases of dengue were recorded in the country. This number is 40% higher compared with the dengue cases recorded in the same period last year. Ten regions have already exceeded the epidemic threshold, which include the National Capital Region or NCR. According to Secretary Duque, although the Philippines is the lowest in terms of doubling number of cases, we have the highest number of patients who died due to the mosquito-borne disease. Uh, katulad lang tayo ng Malaysia, 100% increase. No? Pero yung mga ibang mga bansa, 300 to 400% ang increase. Pero ganun pa man, ang sa atin, tayo may pinakamataas na bilang ng mga bata o ng mga biktima ng dengue na, na masakit sabihin na pumanaw. In San Juan City, 147 cases have been recorded this year. The local government says they will not be complacent but rather work on preventing the increase of dengue rate in the city. Kailangan talaga rito yung tamang edukasyon at kaalaman para sa lahat. Secretary Duque reminds there must be sustained hydration among dengue patients. Yung sustained hydration, S for sustained hydration kasi tubig ang pinakamalaking nawawala sa katawan ng medengue. So dapat painumin ng maraming tubig. Yung mga bata, painumin ng maraming tubig. At dalhin na sa ospital. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. Florida expanded a state of emergency Thursday due to Hurricane Dorian, which is forecast to become a highly dangerous Category 4 storm during the weekend before hitting the state's Atlantic coast. Beverly Saison tells us why. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis had declared a state of emergency for 26 counties on the East Coast but extended it on Thursday to the whole of Florida. Authorities canceled some commercial flights, planned precautions at rocket launch sites along the Space Coast, and prepared to give out sand to residents for sandbags ahead of the storm's arrival. Uh, I think the key thing is is to you know have a plan and execute your plan and, and take make preparations. Um, we don't necessarily know the exact contours of this storm, but we know it's a serious storm, and we know it has a chance to really have significant impacts on the state of Florida. Spurred on by warm late summer waters, Dorian is predicted to pack winds reaching 209 kilometers per hour in 72 hours, the Miami-based National Hurricane Center said. That would make it a Category 4 storm, the second strongest on the Saffir-Simpson scale for measuring hurricane intensity. 
The center describes Category 4 storms as capable of causing catastrophic damage, including severe damage to well-built homes. It said in such storms, most trees will be snapped or uprooted and power poles downed. Dorian is likely to make landfall on Florida's eastern coast on Monday before lingering over central Florida on Tuesday. But tropical storm force winds from Dorian could begin in parts of Florida as early as Saturday evening, the Hurricane Center said. The storm could affect big population centers as well as major Florida tourist destinations. Currently a Category 1 hurricane, Dorian was headed toward the Bahamas on Thursday after sideswiping Caribbean islands without doing major damage. Dorian is expected to strengthen and slam the Bahamas and the southeastern United States with rain, strong winds and life-threatening surf over the next few days. U.S. President Donald Trump has canceled a trip to Poland because of the storm. We have the best people in the world ready and they're going to help you. We're shipping food, we're shipping water, but it may be that you're going to evacuate. Just uh, be aware and be safe and God bless you. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Left to fend for themselves, members of the Miki tribe patrol their sacred land in the Amazon to put out wildfires after the area's fire brigade service was cut. MJ Pineda tells us why. Carrying a water container fashioned into a backpack and a humble water pump, tribal youths from the Miki tribe patrol go out in small groups as a preventative force. They don't have the means to tackle large wildfires, but look to douse flames before they can spread. A Reuters report released earlier this month found that Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's government had weakened the federal agency charged with protecting the rainforest through budget cuts, leaving many indigenous tribes on the front lines of wildfires. Cool. A long time ago, there was a fire brigade, and a while ago, it stopped. Many people here have many problems because of the fires. Nearby plantations catch fire. Plantations are not looked after, and it burns the forest. The result is devastation. The Mickey have lived in this area of the Amazon for generations. Only about 400 Mickey remain. But their culture has survived Portuguese colonization, diseases brought over from Europe, and even threats and massacres from encroaching ranchers. But they are now facing arguably their biggest threat, yet a record number of fires. Fighting for survival, the Mickey fear it is an uphill battle against wildfires as they are forced to improvise with limited equipment. For me, the forest, the vegetation, the animals are very important for me. Those plants provide us with life, so it's very important for us to bring in materials to combat fires. If we just leave the fires be, then it will be the end of us. Through July, the destruction of Brazil's rainforest is up 67% compared to the same period a year ago, according to preliminary data released by the country's National Institute for Space Research, or INPE. Nearly 80,000 fires have been recorded this year through August 24, the highest level since at least 2013. MJ Pineda, UNTV News and Rescue. And in other news, two pilots who are taking part in an ambitious attempt to circumnavigate the globe in a newly restored Silver Spitfire reached California on Wednesday. Pilot Steve Brooks and Matt Jones set off in the iconic single-engine aircraft from Goodwood Aerodome in West Sussex in southern England on August 5. The restored Silver Spitfire was commonly used during World War II by the Allies. The challenge will see the pilots travel a distance of 43,000 kilometers and is expected to take more than four months to complete. Loverdad Christian College Apalit Pampanga is thankful for reaching yet another milestone. This as the school ranks third among the top performing schools in the August 2019 licensure examination for social workers. Mon Hoxon reports. 
La Verdad Christian College, Apalit, makes history as 16 out of the 17 takers of the board exam for social workers passed. According to the Professional Regulation Commission's website, the University of the Philippines is number one among the top performing schools, followed by Leyte Normal University. The PRC says 5,880 took the exam and only 2,723 or 46% passed. Salamat sa Dios sa lahat ng kanyang kabutihan, sa pagtulong niya sa atin upang uh, makapasa ang uh, halos lahat sa ating mga estudyante. At kauna-una nito kasi first uh, graduates namin itong batch na ito ng BS Social Work. The board exam was held last August 21 to 23 in different parts of the country. Reviewing for the board exam is not easy for the Leverdad students because they usually volunteer in different social works such as the free medical mission led by Brother Eli Soriano and Kuya Daniel Razon. The students are thankful to Brother Eli and Kuya Daniel for giving them the chance to study for free in La Verdad. So, yun, maaalala mo lagi yung mga parang ni Brad Eli, ni Kuya Daniel, na bago niya isagawa ng sambagay, matalaki niya ng pagkakas. Na-imagine mo yung mga paghihirap nila para na makapagtapos kami ng mga estudyante sa La Verdad. LVCC is a private, non-stock, non-sectarian educational institution that is the first in the Philippines to offer full scholarship from tuition, miscellaneous fees, to school uniforms, books, and even meals. The discipline taught in La Verdad sets it apart from all other schools in the Philippines. Gusto ko lang po na yung kinikita ko, maibahagi ko sa mga mag-aaral na gusto mang mag-aaral, makatulong sa magulang, eh wala namang pangmatrikula. Marami na rin po tayong natulungan sa awa ng Panginoon na ngayon nakakatulong na sa kanilang mga pamilya. Kaya ang aking hikayat sa inyo, mga kapatid, mga magulang, tulungan natin ang ating mga anak na lagi niyong paalalahanan na laging mayroon takot sila sa Diyos. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this August 30, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Describing in his own words, the president said, it went very well. Oh, and if it went very well, they, how can it be a failure? Pag naipasa to, sabat, naisabatas ito, maraming hindi atin na sauna. Obviously, dapat makabalik sila. Sa? Sa kulungan. Tayo may pinakamataas na bilang ng mga bata o ng mga biktima ng dengue na, na masakit sabihin na pumana. Yun, maaalala mo lagi yung mga parang ni Fred Eli, ni Kuya Daniel, na bago niya isagawa ng sambagay, matalaki niya 